Galactic Navy Officer Becomes an Adventurer, written by Edo, Chapter 89 Church Part 1. It was now the third day since the crackdown on criminal elements within the royal capital began. The crackdown was going relatively smoothly. We've assaulted three criminal bases today and received no injuries. It was safe to say that everything was proceeding as planned. In the past two days, the bandits did not seem to have expected an attack, and they didn't show any signs of being prepared at all, but the bandits we raided today have poised themselves for a siege and were fairly well armed. It looks like the rumors regarding our extensive crackdown have already made their rounds, and it looks like we can assume that almost every bandit group residing within the royal capital should now be on high alert. Herman, this should be enough for today. Let's pull out. Understood. It was almost evening and there weren't any other bandit hideouts nearby. Sometimes it was better to finish up early. Herman instructed ten or so garrison soldiers to transport the fifteen captured bandits and carry back the sellable goods that we confiscated from the bandit hideout. Even so, the garrison soldiers were indiscriminately grabbing everything they could get a hold off inside the base regardless of whether or not they looked valuable enough. Maybe their unusual zeal for looting stems from the fact that we decided to split the profits in half with the garrison. Mm. I proceeded to return to the inn with the Shining Star members, Hermon, and the ten garrison soldiers. After we left the building that was used as a hideout by the bandits and rounded the first corner, we ended up bumping into a lone man. An orange cursor and a note were placed on top of the man's head via Nanam's AR display. The man displayed a look of surprise the moment he saw us, and he quickly turned on his heels to run away. I released an air bullet at the poor sob without asking any questions and put him down. Catch him. He's a member of one of the bandit groups we captured yesterday. Yes. Three garrison soldiers rushed forward to secure the man who was now lying prone in the middle of the road. The term rough search was something I learned from the garrison soldiers while working with them for the past few days. It seems whenever we forcibly break inside bandits' hideouts, we were technically conducting a rough search of the premises. It seems the man ran away after seeing the red armbands we and the garrison soldiers were wearing. His actions were just too conspicuous, so it was easy to have Hermon and the others make a move on him. We were all now wearing red armbands on our right arms due to Hermon's request. He said he'd like to have something on our persons that would make it easier to distinguish friend from foe from a single glance. So we hurriedly requested Katal to procure these bands for us. I wasn't aware at first, but apparently, it was strictly forbidden to use magic spells within the city premises. So these armbands were pretty handy for making snap judgments. Well, we were conducting raids due to a royal order, so that rule didn't actually apply to us. Your Excellency, don't tell me you are able to remember the faces of all the bandits we've encountered until now. Of course not. That guy just happened to make an impression on me, so I was able to recognize him. The orange cursor displayed on top of the man's head indicated that he had been actively coming and going from a bandit hideout. Persons with strong evidence of perpetrating crimes against them had red cursors on top of their heads instead. I asked Iris to do it like this so I'd be able to easily identify the bandits and criminals walking around in the city. It was pretty convenient. Before long, we finally managed to reach the inn. For some reason, Hermann always makes sure to escort us back to the inn after every operation. Your Excellency, actually, I have something to consult with you about. Very well. Let us talk while having tea, shall we? I invited Hermann to the inn's dining hall and decided to have a discussion with him there. It's actually regarding the interrogation of the captured bandits, Your Excellency. There are more of them than we initially expected, and it looks like interrogating them will actually affect our regular duties at this rate. I am truly ashamed of our inadequacy. I see. The sum total of the bandits we've captured these past few days should be over 200 already. They'd certainly have problems when it comes to accommodating all of them, and considering that detailed interrogations were conducted one-on-one, -on -one, they'd need quite a lot of manpower. The capital garrison didn't have surplus personnel available, and to be honest, having the soldiers handle the interrogation by themselves was pushing it a bit since it was a job that needed to be done separately from their usual duties. No, I believe something like that is natural considering the magnitude of the work. In fact, 
I feel like I'm the one who should be apologizing for failing to realize such a thing. All right. We will temporarily suspend crackdown activities starting tomorrow. Please contact me again once you're already able to afford it. I'm truly sorry about this, Your Excellency. We really appreciate it. Afterward, I talked to Herman regarding the progress of the interrogation. It seems that all the captured people were guilty of some form of crime, and they were all going to be punished according to the gravity of their sins. Persons who have committed crimes were usually sent to mines to serve as mining slaves. It seems there was a good number of mining camps they could be sent to, and their treatment as well as the duration of their sentence would be determined according to their crimes. It's not like they would be sentenced without any trial, though. Not exactly, anyway. They basically underwent trials via kangaroo courts. This country really is harsh when dealing with criminals, huh? Just like I expected, the interrogations conducted were pretty harsh, and they were able to squeeze out quite a bit of info from the bandits at the bottom of the barrel in their respective groups. After we wrapped up our discussion, Herman excused himself and left the inn together with his men. Selena and Sharon's teams have returned as well. According to their reports, there were some people who ended up receiving slight injuries, but it looks like they were able to fix them up through magic. They were also able to confiscate quite a lot of stuff. I conveyed Herman's request while we were having our dinner. And so, we'll still keep a regular guard detail to watch over the inn, but I'll have you take turns having day-offs, everyone. Ooh, this was perfect since we haven't had an opportunity to relax and see the sights ever since arriving at the royal capital. Alan, what are you going to do tomorrow then? I'm going to visit the church in the morning. I have an appointment with the bishop. The bishop? I actually didn't make an appointment with the guy, but since he told me I could come over any time I like after that little play a few days back, I technically wasn't lying. Alan, have you really made an acquaintance with a bishop of the church? I went to the church a couple of days ago. I was able to meet him at that time. I was thinking of having a priest dispatched to our new territory, you see. I'll come to the church tomorrow to negotiate for that. Ah, that would be really wonderful, Alan. Truly is Riyasama. Is it really something so amazing? But, of course, devout believers wouldn't want to move to a place lacking a church. Hence, it's very important to build a church and invite a priest to preside over it. Oh, it was actually a lot more important than I first expected. Actually, I should prioritize accomplishing it for now. Well then, I shall also be accompanying you, Alan. Of course, I will not get in the way of the negotiations. I would like to offer my gratitude to Ruminus Sama and pray that the negotiations go well. If so, I will be coming as well. Us too. Even though it was a long-awaited day off, everyone seems to want to follow me to the church. Well, I'd have to bring a group of escorts with me whenever I go out anyway, so I suppose it's fine if we all went there together. The next morning, I spent a leisurely time in the bath since it was basically our day off, and when we went out of the inn, a carriage was already prepared. I was actually thinking of walking all the way, but the escorts would probably find it easier to guard me if I'm riding a carriage, so it can't be helped. There were five Shining Star Clan members acting as our guard escorts. Together with Cleria and the girls, there were a total of ten of us. When we arrived at the church and proceeded inside, we found a lot of devout believers enthusiastically praying within. A church sister immediately went to where our group was to welcome us. I suppose it's because I was wearing fancy noble clothes and even brought a good number of people with me. Greetings, Lord Corinth. Welcome to our humble church. The sister greeted me and knelt down. When I looked closely at her, I recognized her as one of the sisters who I met when I first came to this church. But they're already aware that I've become a noble ha. Huh? I guess it's true that my promotion was really the talk of the town, huh? Is Bishop Gertner available today? He is. He instructed us to let him know the moment you come in for a visit, Lord Corinth. Please follow me. I had Cleria, Elna, and the rest of the escorts remain in the main chapel and brought Sharon and Selina with me. The room the sister brought us to was different from the one I came to last time I was here. It was a pretty luxurious room with expensive-looking furnishings. I'm pretty sure this was the reception room that was exclusively reserved for nobles. Before long, Bishop Gertner arrived. 